Greetings again. Welcome to our study through the Psalms. We're going to continue on in Psalm 18 as part three today. I've already done uh, uh, first part verses one through three and then the second part verses four through 27. We're going to finish it off today 28 through 50 as David has written this psalm, the song of praise for deliverance from God and David just starts right out right off the bat saying this is a song that he I sung on the day that God delivered me and he claims him as his strength his rock his fortress his shield his everything and he declares and I love this he says I will love you O Lord that is an amazing statement and I I think that every once in a while we should say that to the Lord I love you Lord You've done great things for me. And so David goes on today, and I guess the greatest thing that I want you to uh, receive from the rest of this psalm today is that uh, God gives strength. So many times in the Bible, I can use so many scriptures. I'm going to use a few at the end here, but so many scriptures have to do with us being strong the joy of the lord is our strength now it may mean that the joy uh, if we have joy we have strength Uh, it may be that the joy of the lord that he is joyed he is overjoyed when we are strong and his command to us is to be strong we'll cover that i want you to be able to see this and not only is it just strength okay physical strength it's mental strength it's emotional strength it's especially spiritual strength and the strength that i see here as he describes this today david describes it is actually supernatural strength that comes only from god you know i love superman he gets his strength from the sun i get my strength from the sun too but s-o-n sun But you remember Superman, I think the description was that he was faster than a speeding bullet. He was more powerful than a locomotive. He is able to leap over buildings in a single bound. Man, and I have some of the Superman movies in my house. I love to show my kids. Watch this scene. He catches an airplane and sets it down in the middle of a a stadium and the crowd goes wild. He saves all these people from an airplane crash. I love it. Do we know anybody like that? No. Jesus has strength. My point here talking about Superman is something that is supernatural. David is describing a supernatural strength that was given to him by God, and he describes it. And so I'm just going to read the verses for you. It starts out in verse 28 through 34. You will light my lamp. The Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. Again, remember that David feels like he's in a dark place, distressed place, and God is going to come in with light. Oh, how great that is. When you're in a dark, distressed, and deep deep place, it's good to have light. But it goes on, for by you I can run through a troop, and by my God I can leap over a wall. There it is, supernatural strength. I can leap over a wall. Man, like Superman, leaping over a building in in a single bound. He can run through a troop. He describes this strength that is given to us by God. And let me just tell you, when you are weak, he is strong. He wants you to have his strength. He, He commands us to be strong. And it comes from him and him alone. Nobody can do what David did without God's help. It goes on, verse 30. As for God, his way is perfect. And the word of the Lord is proven, it's tested. He is a shield to all who trust in him. You see, God gives words, and he might give you a word, he might give you a verse, he might give you a scripture, and he wants you to hold on to it. But David is saying this, after it's already been proven. He cried out to the Lord. The Lord delivered him. He saw his deliverance, and he said, your word is true. 
your word is absolutely true. I'm so glad I held on to it. He is a shield to all who trust in him. His way is a perfect way. We may think we have the perfect way, but it's actually him who has the perfect way, and we should yield to that. And David says this in, in verse 30, As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven. He is a shield to all who trust in him. Goes on, verse 31 through 34, For who is God except the Lord? And who is a rock except our God? It is God who arms me with strength. Are you feeling weak today? Uh, physically, mentally, spiritually? <laughs> Man, it's God who gives you strength. Go to the fountain today. It is God who arms me with strength and makes my way perfect. He makes my feet like the feet of deer and sets me on high places. He teaches my hands to make war so that my arms can bend a bow of bronze. Man, verse 33, he makes my feet like the feet of deer. Well, you know, David oftentimes hid out from Saul in En Gedi. It was a rocky place where there was, there was uh, water there, springs of water but uh, high ledges, and he would often see the goats up there standing upon a ledge. They were sure-footed. I might be, I would be, no doubt, I would be extremely anxious, nervous, shaking if I was standing on that ledge. I would never put myself in that place. I wouldn't step out on that ledge. But these goats, they don't seem to care. These deer, they don't seem to care. They just stand there and they're secure. And David is relating that. He's got a picture in his mind. He, he makes my feet like the feet of deer and he sets me on my high places. You know, he puts you on a rock to stay. He teaches my hands to make war so that my arms can bend a bow of bronze. No, you know, we don't often think of God as being violent, but oftentimes he did. He came to a place of wrath and said, okay, you got to take care of these people. They're not repentant. And so we must do something. And war has come in. I'm looking forward to the day where there is no more war. There's nothing but peace. But for the time being, there's always war. He teaches David the, uh, David's hands to make war. And it says that I make, may, my arms can bend a bow of bronze. That seems to be a, you know, a bow that is very difficult to, to bend, the strings. And you need strength to do that. It reminded me again, Genesis 49, 24. We're speaking of Joseph here as his father Jacob is about ready to pass off the scene and he's prophesying over all 12 of his sons, he gets to Joseph, and I'm only going to read one verse as he prophesies over Joseph, but it says of him, but his bow remained in strength, and the arms of his hands were made strong by the hands of the mighty God of Jacob from there is the shepherd, the stone of Israel. You see how it relates here? Jacob says of Joseph, man, he remained in strength. He was strong. Even though his brothers came after him, his hands were made stronger. And by who? By the hands of the mighty God. And so again, we see it's supernatural strength. It comes from God alone. If you're feeling weak today, ask him for strength. It goes on, verse 35, <clears throat> 36 and 37. You have also given me the shield of your salvation. Your right hand has held me up. Your gentleness has made me great. You enlarged my path under me, so my feet did not slip. I have pursued my enemies and overtaken them. Neither did I turn, my, turn back again till they were destroyed. Now, that sounds pretty violent, yes. And I want to make sure that you know, he never, he never turned against brothers. He never turned against Saul, actually. But he did turn against his enemies. 
And I want you to know that his enemies were the same enemies that were the enemies of God. If you remember, as he challenged Saul, he said, or, 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 or Goliath, you have blasphemed the name of my God. It's not me that you've blasphemed. It's my God that you have. And he stood up and he did not run away from that battle. He pursued it. And that's what it says. I have pursued my enemies, overtaken them. Neither did I turn my back until they were destroyed. He said to Goliath, I'm going to take your head from your body and I'm going to feed the flesh of all the Philistines to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field because he has blasphemed the name of God. He was, he was going after God's enemies. He never went after his own brother's his own nation. It goes on, verses 38 through 45 say, I have wounded them so that they could not rise. They have fallen under my feet, for you have armed me with strength for the battle. You have subdued under me those who rose up against me. You have also given me the necks of my enemies so that I destroyed those who hated me. They cried out, but there was none to save, even to the Lord, but he did not answer them. Then I beat them as fine as dust before the wind. I cast them out like dirt in the streets. You have delivered me from the strivings of the people. You have made me the head of the nations. A people I have not known shall serve me. As soon as they hear of me, they obey me. The foreigners submit to me. The foreigners fade away and come frightened from their hideouts. Many times... As David went after the enemies of the Lord and other nations that blasphemed God, he would come to those cities and they would just come out and surrender because, because they knew David and they knew that the Lord was with David and it was of no sense fighting against him. They just submitted and David claims that here. And I just want you to remember that this is God's enemies that he he pursues. You know, but you see a strength that is in all these verses. And I said, uh, if there's anything that I want you to get today, it's that strength that comes from God, that our dependency is upon him. I do like to work out. I do like to get the weights out just to kind of maintain a little bit of strength. But really, my strength as I get older, it can only come from God. It just kind of reminds me of one of my favorite people in the Bible, Caleb. He said in, I think it was Joshua 14, I'm as strong today as I was when I was 40. That was when he was 85 years old. I'm as strong today as I was back when I was 40. And that means for battle. He was able to go to war and go against giants. He was like, well, David comes from that. Okay. So same attitude. Maybe David wrote of, read of Caleb and said, I want to be like that guy. Uh, Caleb was a giant chaser, chaser when he was 85 years old. His strength came from God. And I'm going to give you some verses, just a few. And maybe you want to write in something to me. You know, I got another verse that talks about strength. But Isaiah 40, verse 29, it says, He gives power to the weak. And to those who have no might, he increases strength. So right there, that verse right there, man. When you're weak, you go to him. He's the one who increases our strength. And that's all kinds of strength. It's not just physical strength. It is mental. It is emotional. And it is spiritual strength. We do have an enemy Okay, I don't think mankind is our enemy so much, but we do have an enemy, Satan, who comes against us, and there's only one way to defeat him, and that's with the Word of God, the Spirit of God. We need supernatural strength. Uh, you know this for verse 2, Isaiah 40, verse 31, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. We need our strength renewed every day. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And that's when you're older. The previous verse, verse 30, talks about young people 
being strong, but even they will faint. But those who wait on the Lord, they will renew their strength. Philippians 4.13, I can do all things. Does it end right there? No. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That speaks for itself. The Apostle Paul said that. I believe we need to be able to say that to strengthen me, Lord, today. Ephesians 3.16, I love this one. Paul is writing to the Ephesian church and he's in the middle of telling what, what he's praying for, how he bows down the knee and, and prays for certain things. He gets to verse 16, that he would grant you. He prays that he would grant you. He prays that God would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. Man, that speaks of a spiritual strength to me. It's not physical. It is a spiritual strength that only comes by the Holy Spirit. And I pray that for many people. I pray that for myself. I pray that for my brothers and sisters here at church, that we would all be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. It's not the outward. <clears throat> As I mentioned, Ephesians 6, 10 and 11 Finally, be strong, my brethren, in the Lord and in the power of his might. See, where do we get our strength? From his might, his power, strong in the Lord. Put on the full armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles, the schemes of the devil. You see, David was writing in this psalm about the schemes of man, maybe inspired by the devil, I don't know, but he had men coming at we don't often have that so much but we do have an enemy he schemes against us he's dark and he's very powerful and the only way that we'll defeat him is with with god's strength the armor of god let's finish off this psalm verses 46 through 50 says the lord lives now see Hear the expression of praise and thanksgiving as David has experienced deliverance. And notice the, the times that he mentions the word deliver here. The Lord lives. Blessed be my rock. Let the God of my salvation be exalted. It is God who avenges me and subdue, subdues the peoples under me. He delivers me from my enemies. You also lift me up above those who rise against me. You have delivered me from the violent man. Therefore, I will give thanks to you, O Lord, among the Gentiles and sing praises to your name. Great deliverance he gives to his king and shows mercy to his anointed, to David and his descendants forevermore. Man, that he just rises up. It starts actually at the beginning and you can just feel it. It's a long song. Uh, maybe it starts out slow and then slowly increases, increases through the song and gets to a crescendo. Man, I think this is it right here. The Lord lives. Blessed be my rock. Let the God of my salvation be exalted. He says, I'm going to give thanks to you uh, among the Gentiles, unbelievers. I'm going to give thanks to you. It's like you go to a restaurant and you, uh, you're having, you're going to have something to eat. Should, should we say grace in front of all these people? Yeah. Let's give thanks to the Lord in front of everybody. And let's sing praises to his name. That's what David is saying. And he speaks of the great deliverance that God gave to his king. And he shows mercy to his anointed not only to David, but to his descendants forevermore. What a great psalm. A great psalm of praise and thanksgiving for God avenging and delivering from a stressful and a difficult place that David was in. He does the same for us. Let's pray. <clears throat> Father, we thank you today that we can trust you, that we can trust your word. It's a proven word, Lord. And what you say is going to happen will happen. And if you say that you will avenge us, then you will, Lord. And so we thank you for that. 
assurance today. I do pray that you would bring us out of those stressful places, that we would see your hand and we would experience your supernatural strength through the power of the Holy Spirit today, Lord. And I pray for my brothers and sisters who may be listening, Lord, if they are in a place of weakness, let them cry out to you. Renew their strength in every single way, Lord. And we thank you today in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you and have a wonderful day.